Hello and welcome to episode five of the Sport Flex podcast. I'm happily joined by my guy Wigan Winger, same school things, Viv Solomon Otterball. What's good, bro? I'm good, thank you, man. Thanks for having me, man. No it's worries. A pleasure, man. Man. Thanks for coming on. How's lockdown been? Um, I'd say the first lockdown was strange, isn't it? But this one's a bit more calm because obviously football's on, isn't it? And so. We're allowed to work, we're allowed to do what we like. So I say this one's a bit more, it's a bit more, not, not free, but it gives me an opportunity, it gives us an opportunity to do what we like. Hold on, let me um, close the window because it's a bit loud. Yeah, it's calm. But yeah, so it gives me an opportunity to like do what I, what I love doing. Mm. Whereas before, obviously, the first lockdown, couldn't really do much because obviously football wasn't on and plus it was summer and yeah so but now it's, it's good I'm happy man I'm happy during the first lockdown was, was it hard to like stay fit because you didn't know when games were going to come back you know what I'm saying uh, for me obviously because I, I was in um, CSKA Sofia and Bulgaria, Bulgaria so when the first lockdown happened I've just um, what's it called I had a um, we had, I came to a mutual agreement for me to leave because obviously Corona and everything and, and yeah. they needed help. Like obviously they wanted to kind of say to like the ones who like they were paying very well, like look, we need the club needs help and stuff. So cool, came to a mutual agreement. So obviously I've just come back to England. So then like when I was in Bulgaria, because obviously the Corona wasn't as bad, like even though I was in my house, I was going to football, I was still going to train and stuff. Yeah. You get? So obviously when Corona, also, when I got back, obviously, I'm in the midst of sorting out, like, my new club, speaking to people, whatever. Mm. But I'm just working with my personal trainer every day. And mm. it was just weird. Like, it was just, like, being, obviously, being back for the first time in, like, 10 months. And then everywhere's locked down. Like, you go shopping supermarkets and that. Bro, they're, like, you're lining up for, like, an hour, two hours. And I'm Bro. thinking, oh, what's this? <laughs> like, I'm trying to go back, like, I can't, I'm not ready for this. Like, this is long. <laughs> so it was just a bit weird, but then obviously we just got used to like, we made, I just made, um, like, we made the best out of the situation, wasn't it? Did you get it? Yeah. Like yeah. playing football and stuff where we wasn't supposed to. You get it? So like we made the best out of the situation, wasn't it? To be honest. So you kind of a bit, feel a bit normal. So it was all right for me, man. That's good. And family's good. Everyone's healthy. Yeah, no, everyone's healthy. Everyone's fine. Like, everyone's cool. Everyone's blessed, which is the most important thing, mm. to be honest. So as long as they were they were healthy and fine, obviously I am, then that's, that's the most important thing for me to know. Yeah, just final question on the whole lockdown. Like, how different is it playing with and without fans? Like, is there a major difference or is it hard to stay motivated? Because no one's cussing you on the pitch or like picking you up. Like, do you know what it is? Like, it almost feels as if youth level, because you know when you was a youth player, you, you never used to play with fans, and it? it was just like, what, spectate, spectators, couple parents on the side and that. But at the same time, you always want to win, in it? You're trying to do your thing on the pitch, you're trying to play well. So playing with no fans at obviously professional level, at the same time, three points is still at stake. Do you get it? So yeah. you have to be on point, because regardless, the game's going to be covered, people are going to be talking about people are going to be sick. So see it, so you have to be on point. Obviously, that just feels... Playing in front of what thirty thousand, you get fifteen thousand, mm. whatever many thousands of people. But obviously, at the same time, nah, man, I don't really feel a difference. You just, I feel like maybe players feel more comfort, um, comfortable, more confident, and express themselves more because maybe they try things and there's not what twenty thousand people getting onto them. But whereas, mm. um, Whereas playing without playing, yeah, playing with fans, obviously you get me like fans might get onto you a bit, but it's just part of the game, innit? Like they're passionate. Yeah. But I think, nah, man, I, I feel like it's just just normal because at the end of the day, you're trying to win, you're trying to get the three points, innit? So you gotta be on your you gotta be on your craft at all yeah. times. I hear that, but let's take it back to when you was a young guy. You know, just come out of your mama's room fresh. Like, how did you get into football? Was it from a mad young age, or was it like you picked up as you got older? So, so basically, obviously, when I was like four or five, I could play football in it. Like, obviously, on my area, on my block, like I could play it, but I wasn't really playing it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. 
I, I wasn't really interested. Like, I was more interested in playing kiss chase with the girls in there. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, I'm saying, like, yeah, I that, so. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like my <laughs> So then, um, so then when like um, when was it? So then I remember I went to Nigeria for a holiday. So I've gone to Nigeria now, and I'm at my grandma's house, and I'm seeing like trophies i'm seeing pictures of this guy in it mm. i think who's this guy like grandma like who's this and grandma's like right that's your dad i was like what so i like call him now so like, i made the medal i'm in Nige, nigeria and i'm four or five years old like, i made my grandma call my dad asap so i call my dad she's called my dad now obviously saying to my dad like right like we've just seen your pictures in it and i was like, like what dad you used to play football yeah it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, I like, swear like, I was proper gassed. Yeah. So then, um, what's it called? I, um, I said, bro, like, as, soon as, I get, as soon as I get back to England, I like, buy me a kit, buy me some astroturfs and a football. And obviously when we, <laughs> when we landed, we went straight to, back in the day, it was called Sports World. It wasn't even Sports Direct. Yeah, yeah Sports World, yeah. So we've gone yeah. to Sports World. Yeah, we've gone to, we've gone to Sports World. They've bought me like astroturfs, like, like it's like a, just like a training set and a ball, and then from there it was game over, man. That's how it started, bro. Then that was it. I was saying, um, so when you're in primary school, you not, you know, a certain man are just like their ball. you pass them the ball? Was you one of them guys? What? Yeah, yeah. Like, what? As in, someone would pass it to me? Yeah, as in, like we pass it to Viv. Oh, I want to be on Viv's team. Like you're the main man. So like in in primary school, yeah, obviously you know like I don't know if it was like that in your primary school, but every year group had two classes. Yeah, yeah, we did, yeah, we were saying. So yes. like so every year group would have two classes in the year, in it. Is it was it two or four? It was two, yeah. So then um yeah, it was two. So obviously we would play against each other the two different classes every day, in it, in the playground. Yeah. So obviously my class will play against the other class in the playground. Like so a big rivalry, you know. Like it <laughs> yeah, was, school rivalry. It was serious, but like, even girls were playing like it was it was rival, like it was rivalry, like to the point where like we weren't we weren't really cool with the other class because of, uh, of the, the rivalry we had in football. <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like not until like we got to like year five and obviously we was all best friends and that like, whatever, but whew. so then obviously my class obviously I was probably obviously I was the best in my class, in it. I'm sure I was the best in my class, but at the same time we had good players as well, wasn't it? Mm. So it wasn't necessarily oh, I want to be on Vivsting because obviously we was our class was already our team, in it. Do you get? It? Yeah. So that's how we kind of just done it every bro, every day for like four years, bro. That's <laughs> what it was, yeah. us versus them. So so was, and they had good players as well. Do you mm. get? It? So they had some decent players in, in other classes as well. So that's what it was. So, like, no one from their class would really say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be on Viv's team. It was literally my class versus their class. So, that's how it was, early stages. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So, who, who were, like, your early heroes? Who did you look up to, like, professionally? Like, you watched them thought, I want to be like him. I was Thierry Henry, man. Yeah. Like, I wasn't an Arsenal fan, but it was just Thierry Henry, like, like, you know, like, when he used to knee slide and when he used to yeah. score on the knee slide, and like, I would knee slide in my living room and that. Like, I wasn't... But even though I wasn't even an Arsenal fan, but some of his, but the way he's just swagger, like his swagger and how he used to play and his confidence in that, that's what I used to like. Mm. So it was probably Thierry Henry, man. Thierry Henry, man, just like the gloves, everything he did was just like with confidence, with just his arrogance yeah. was mad. It was magical, man. It was magical. So you get to secondary school now, and it's like maybe you got to take school a bit more seriously. So are you straight or set on um, becoming a baller or like, who, what team are you playing for? Or are you still chasing after the girls? <laughs> I'm not chasing after the girls. The girls were chasing me. I was playing kiss chase, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was like year one, that was like your one time, you know, them dumb game, but so then, yeah. not, so then all the way through um, primary school, like from that, that moment when I came back from Nigeria, like when I was in year one, year two, mm. Like from from year two, that's when I was serious. That's when I started going to like training sessions. There used to be some training coach at Power League. I used to go there every Wednesday. Then I'd go to Crystal Palace every foot like every was it Thursday as well? Like so I was doing that every week, like just training, like obviously school holidays, they used to have like the one week um soccer camps and that. 
I was doing all of that, like, through primary school. So, obviously, I was proper serious trying to get into an academy from early. Because mm. it was very, back in the day, it was very difficult, innit? Before you go into, like, a Fulham academy, you'd have to go to the development centre for, like, six weeks yeah. before you can even get a trial. So, I used to go to, like, Fulham soccer schools, Chelsea soccer schools when I was in primary school. All of that, I'd done all of that when I was young. So then, like, Battersea Park, they used to do it as well. So like, I used to do all of that. So from, from, that, from that time when I came back from Nigeria, it wasn't even, oh, playing ch- kiss chase with the girls in the playground. It was football. Like, I'm coming back into lessons sweating. To get, <laughs> yeah. Sweating because all we made was kicking ball. So then, yeah, when we got to secondary school, it was a bit different, innit? Because, obviously, my school never had a football team. And so it was, when you get to secondary school, you're seeing, you're, you're meeting new people and you're meeting people from different areas, different boroughs who are also good at football as well. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So then at that point, it's like, oh, it's like, right, like, okay, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick. You're not like the only one. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. So then, um, school, I was, obviously I had to be serious in school, innit? but at the same time, I always wanted to play football, even though I was still playing at what, I was playing for what, who was I playing for them times? Um, two in a Mitchum. So it wasn't, I wasn't like a early professional club then times. I was still like, Learn my trade and like graft in, in that sense, but I was still taking school seriously as well. But I was in my mind, I wanted to be a professional footballer, yeah. So, did, what did the school help with that? Be like professional footballer, like, like they let you play, they let you go. Like, sometimes when you're at academies, you, you have to do training certain days, you can't come into school and that, yeah. Like, so, um, in your Obviously, when I started, like obviously, school football matches and that, they'll let me go. Mm. You get so they'll let me go to the school match. Obviously, year seven, I was in the school team, and they'll let me go. But obviously, when I was in towards the end of year seven, obviously, I kind of got dropped out of the team because I wasn't, I wasn't behaving in classes and that, it. So that was my punishment. Behaving thing, yeah, they did. They, they hate so that. Like, it's a unit. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, so then teachers would start moving mad. They'll start calling this, like, Mr. like the, the the sports teachers at the time, Mr. Mayan, be like, oh, he's got detention. Right? He's, he hasn't been good in my lesson. So then, obviously, I had no choice but to, like, leave me out. So then when I got to, like, year eight, obviously, like, I kind of, like, patterned up. And, like, not just, but I used to, like, but not necessarily that I needed to pattern up. I just get in trouble for, like, just dumb things, like, just talking back to a teacher, like, little things like that. Mm. So then... Um, got back in year eight, was playing, whatever, was playing, we're playing, playing. Year nine, the same. Obviously, I was playing for my Sunday league out of school. So, well, like, football out of school was calm. Like, I was still playing for my team, whatever. But it was just in school where I was, like, in year seven, where they, they kind of said, no, you're not allowed to play for now until, like, you like you're, you start behaving more in lessons. And that. So then, obviously, started behaving more in lessons, got back into the school team. And then, yeah, year nine, that's where everything, like, kicked off. Like, I was just... I just turned into, I went, when was it? I went, um, someone in my family passed away and I had to go back to Nigeria. Obviously for the funeral. So obviously like, for like one week, I went to like, I was just training, just training mad. I just came back to, it came back to England, a freak, man. Different, just a freak. And then mm. that's when like, it was all here in my year. And then I just went like that. Yeah, blue. And then that's when I, that's when I just took off. And then, yeah, signed for, for Crystal Palace. And then from there, that was that was when it all started. Yeah. So from Crystal Palace, what happened there? Like, how did you eventually end up at Blues, Birmingham City? So when I signed for Crystal Palace in year ten, when I was in, so if I was in year ten, you would have been that year eight, innit? Or year seven? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah eight, innit? So then, yeah, I signed for Crystal Palace in year ten, and obviously that first school wasn't trying to let me go out for day release and stuff because I was at Chelsea before on trial. Mm-hmm. I don't know because. I done like a six month trial at Chelsea and I was so close to signing, but then they signed someone else, uh-huh. which broke my heart. Like it broke my heart, but obviously I had to put on a straight face and go back to school. Did you get it? Yeah. Cause I didn't want no one to know how upset I was, but bro, I was burnt for like, I was burnt for like, cause it, they told me, they gave me the decision just before, like a week before the Christmas holidays. Mm-hmm. So what them year, them times was what, two weeks off? So imagine I thought I had two weeks off to like kind of process everything and try and get over it. So luckily, because of the Christmas Christ, um, the Christmas holidays, it allowed me to like get over it because I'm young, mm-hmm. isn't it? Like 
imagine getting told no and like and you thought you've done well, like it's gonna it's gonna burn you, especially for something you love. So then obviously they're like, oh no, we're gonna go with this option. All right, cool, whatever, fair enough. So then off the back of that, I had like a lot of clubs that wanted to sign me. So then I remember the Chelsea stuff at the time, obviously he was a bit angry that they didn't sign me. So then he was like, nah, what about what? Like, why didn't you think of Because they gave me a list of clubs to pick from. So I was like, oh, why don't you pick Palace? So I picked Crystal Palace, um, went there and just smashed it. Mm. And then, yeah, signed there. And then played for two years. Played there, played there for two seasons. So when I was in year ten, um, played, and then had we had like we used to have like a, a meeting review. So like, I remember I had the, um, a review, like a meeting of everything and what happens before I go into year eleven in it because that's like the year where you got to play to like get a scholarship or whatever. For obviously when you leave school and stuff. So then played. Sorry, had the meeting, whatever. My review was like 10, 10 out of 10. It's like, because obviously I was, I'd done very well that year, my first uh, year in it. So then, obviously when I got to under 16, the manager changed, didn't it? So then, <laughs> this manager that had me, bro, like, it was just weird. Like, I, was, I knew I was the best in the team. Mm-hmm. But like, and he knew as well, but it was just acting a bit funny, in it? So like, like, I could score two next game. He might just, like, have me on the bench, like it was just weird, didn't it? So yeah. then I remember, I think we, I was in year, was in, I was in year eleven, it was like the December times. We played Portsmouth away on the 16s game. First half, killing it, and I'm killing it. Then I got subbed at half time. I was like, whoa. Then I was pissed. But I was in tears. I was fuming, like, like just. I was thinking, bro, like what? Like, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? I was thinking, no, like, bro, like, bro, like, for what? He had an agenda um, against you. Bro, I called my dad. And the people he was playing, like, come on, man. Like, ask me if they're, they're playing to... None of them are playing today. Mm. No one plays... Do you know what I'm trying to say? No one plays today. To the... Um, I called... I called... Remember I said to my dad, I said, Dad, no, no, no. I've got to leave. Like, let's call a meeting now. So then... To get the decision to get a scholarship, they... They delayed my decision because obviously that's what I'm trying to say. It was just so funny. Like they delayed my decision and gave decisions to other, but delayed mine to say they wanted to see me a bit more. But bro, you've seen for two years. What yeah. more do you need to know? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But it was just that funny situation. So then, um, uh, yeah, it's an obviously cool for me. And I remember this. I remember this. Pers- I, I remember I had school. Obviously, my dad's picked me up from school, gone to the Crystal Palace training ground, and obviously I've seen the youth team. Yeah. So then, before obviously in the Christmas, like you get, you had the chance. We had the chance to like train with the youth team. And my manager under 15 at the time I was in year 10, he was the assistant youth team manager. So, like we used to join together. So he used to kind of tell them, look, look there's a couple of young boys that are good in it. So then obviously we're training with them. I'm doing my thing, smashing it. And then he's like, see, I told you. So now like the youth team, I kind of really like just thinking, wow, this young boy is good. He's good. So I remember I've seen them all before my meeting and they're like, oh yeah, you're calm, like you're gonna get one, it's calm. Bro, got into the meeting and that the me and my dad sat down and the guy's like, oh no, we're not gonna give him a scholarship. We were like, all right, cool, thank you very much. Shook his hand and just walked out. <laughs> then, bro, then I was I was I wasn't I was upset because of the violation, mm. but I wasn't worried in any way because I knew I'm gonna I'm gonna I was gonna get another team that like, shit away. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then, but it was just only like, 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 raw, like, um, like how can so and so get one but not me? I've mm-hmm. been the best player in the team. I think. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So then, um, yeah. So then, obviously, I went to, um, uh, I went, so I went to a showcase match, and this is where this is where football's for. This is how life is funny in general. Not just football. This will probably happen in life. This will probably happen to you that like, you never know. So. That's so why I'd always say resilience and mental strength is always important, which I always had from young. So then I had this showcase game, killing it, bro, kick that, killing it. All the bro, every club in England is there. Like, so say for instance, you're like around the pitch, every club in England is at that match. That's like, all their official scouts, yeah, bro. I'm killing it. Obviously, my dad's standing. I think it was Celtic, Aston Villa. Birmingham, 
you. Um, Crystal Palace were there. So there was the guy that just said to me, said, no, no you're not giving it, getting a scholarship like two weeks later. Yeah. He seen me smoke, like killing it, innit? it? Because yeah. it was not, bro, that, that's what I was on, like, not even like being like big, like it was just the troops. And then he's gone like afterwards. And then obviously like, I remember, the, I remember the Celtic guy saying to my dad, this is in front of the Crystal Palace guy, you know, oh, yeah. do you fancy moving to Scotland? So obviously there's going to be embarrassment, innit? it? Yeah, 100. So then, so then obviously he's gone to me, oh Viv, like, you're right, like, um, see you at training, like, uh, am I going to see you at training on Thursday? So you can think, man, like, I haven't been here, I haven't seen you for like two, three weeks. What do you mean am I going to be at training on Thursday? Like, like that's, not, that's how life is. Yeah. Life comes back at you like that. So, so then, so then, yeah, um, I remember I had to, went to school, because I remember Derby that day, Derby were just like saying, oh no, we've got to get him up now, like we've got to get him up now. My dad's like, what, school, innit? And obviously these times, it's exam times, innit? The 11 times. So, yeah, 11 times. Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, 11 times. Mm. So then I'm like, to admit, bro, well, <laughs> my dad's had to call them on like Monday morning early. Like, look, obviously, Viv needs to go to Derby for one week. But he, like, but he will take all his work and he'll do all his revision. At first, they weren't having it. But bro, at the same, my dad was like, bro, like, like, there's no time to go. We're going in it. So we went. I went for the week, played, done my thing, whatever. But on the first day in that week, Birmingham City had called me from when I was in the digs. So she did called me and I said, look, like, where are you? I, no, they just called me and said, look, we want you to come. And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm part of me. I said, I'm at Derby right now, but I'll tell my dad. They're like, oh, yeah, we know. Don't worry, just give me your dad's number. We'll call them, whatever. So she said, I've given them my dad's number. And then obviously the week at Derby came and then they were just like, oh, yeah, we're going to get back to you. I was like, okay, cool. So then went back to school on Monday. Everyone thought I got expelled. Like no one saw me. <laughs> Everyone thought I got expelled in that. I was like, yeah. no, like, I was just, I was in I was just out of the con- I was in, like up north tr- mm. out trying like club, just training like a club. And like, oh, okay, cool. So then we went to Birmingham. I remember. You no, know, I played a match. Yeah, so I played a match for Birmingham against Charlton. Imagine I don't know anyone's name. Mm. I don't know no one's name. I've just gone to the Charlton's training with my mum. And my uncle played the game. Just met everyone in the changing room, played the game, bro, smashed the game. Straight away, contract to my face, signed. Then, uh, one game? Signed for, uh, yeah, after one game. Oh, so they just literally dropped you in, like, listen, this guy's a baller, he's playing, straight up. <laughs> like, yeah, literally, because obviously they wanted to see me, they wanted to see in it. So obviously, mm. played, and then, yeah, man, got the scout, bro, got scouted like this. They put the contract to my face, went up. And also, I told I ain't told no one at school, no teachers, nothing. Mm. But then, um, Birmingham kind of started. Remember, Mrs. O'Donovan kind of started liaising yeah, with her. Yeah. So she, they were liaising with her, and they're like, okay, cool, whatever. And then, I've, then obviously, they told her that he's sign, he's gonna sign whatever. So then, obviously, cool, like he's gonna sign a scholarship, whatever. So then, um, uh, school, yeah. So then, yeah, that was calm, like that was pattern. So then, what happened? Yeah. So then, literally. So then, yeah. Signed for um, signed for Birmingham, and then that's when it started. The eleven, literally. Yeah. So, so what happened? Like, with the eleventh, the January. Pardon? What happened with the exams? Did you have to do them in the end? No, I done. I done them. So I literally I signed for Birmingham maybe February twenty twelve. Oh, okay. Just before the exams. No wait. No wait. Because I had the exams 2014, GCSEs, so I'm guessing you would have gone 2012. Wait, 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 when did I start? Was it before Christmas or after Christmas? No, it was just after Christmas because I was still playing for Crystal Palace, so it was just after Christmas, I remember, yeah. So maybe January 2012, or something like that? Oh, okay, cool. So you've, have you moved yeah, to January Birmingham? January 2012, yeah. So no, obviously, no, I had to move. So basically, this is what I used to do. So I'd go to school to like Wednesday. And Thursday, Friday, train, play Saturday for the under 16s and then come back. So, yeah. Literally, that's all. Um, was, was it tiring? That's all. Um, no, nah, it wasn't tiring. It was just sometimes it was a boring in it because, like, I'll, I'd be like to everyone, yo, like, I'm not going to come. I'm not like, you know, like, school is fun at the same time, isn't it? So, like, yeah. Thursday, I'd be like, oh, bro, you like, I'm not even coming, you know, I've got to go. They'll be like, ah. Oh. So then. 
it wasn't tiring because I was doing what I love. Yes. You get it? Yeah. So I, like, I had to prepare myself for when this was going to come day to day. Do you mm. get what I'm trying to say? So it was a bit, obviously, so obviously I had to get used to the transition. So no, it was, it was perfect. I still got to, got to go to a prom and everything like that. So it was calm. Yeah, at least you didn't mess out on that. <laughs> Stuff like that, so it was good. Yeah. So you, when did you permanently like move to Birmingham and start like living there, training day to day? Literally, um, so like, um, you know, like when you lot um break up when we broke you break up for some holidays. Mm. Like July. So obviously broke up for some. Yeah. So obviously, because you're only eleven, you finish earlier, in it because yeah. you have your exams, you do your GCSE, so you finish like. Yeah, let me finish that. Like April, May, in it times. Yeah, early, so you finish early. around like April, May. You get study leave. You're done. Like that's it. Basically, you study leave, and then it's exam time. Then you're gone. That's it. Mm. So, uh, so yeah. So I moved in July. I moved up July. July the seventh. I think July. Yeah, July the seventh, twenty twelve. Moved. That's when I moved up permanently, and that's when it started. So like, how was it? Sixteen-year-old moving to Birmingham. Yeah, I was thinking like you're sixteen, moving to Birms. Like you ain't got. I don't know if you have family there, but I'm sure you're like on your ones and that. How was that transition? I had no family, so like difficult to start, man. I'll be real. Like playing football was fine, but bro, off the pitch was just like I go back to the digs. I just had my phone, my PlayStation. Mm. I'm talking to people on BBM like it's, you're 16 so it's not even like you can get out get in your car drive home or get on the train and drive because you're young you're still class do you know what I mean you're not you're, you're not legally old enough to do certain things mm. so you're in a professional grown man environment where things happen you're, like when you come away from that you're still that 16 year old you're still that young boy you're still that young kid so then bro it was difficult to start and then like I didn't know like no one I, I was just, it was hard, man. It was tough. Mm-hmm. And then I just got used to that. And then I got used to it because it was like, look, this is my opportunity, man. This is what, what, what I've always wanted. So I just mm-hmm. have to adapt. And I've done that, man. And, and then I progressed, progressed, progressed each season. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. So how was the progression like? So 2012, you you joined Bellingham as like a, is it a scholar or is it a scholar, isn't it? Scholarship, yeah, scholarship. You sign for them as a scholar, and you're just progressing, progressing, playing your ball. When is it you think now's my opportunity to like break through, break through, or when are the coaches telling you like you've got potential right. you know, apply yourself and all of that? So then, when I was like 16, I remember um, one time I got asked like, to train with the first team. All oh, right. Wow. Like, oh my god, like, I'm 16 and that. So I've gone over to train. Those times we had like Nathan Redmond in the first team, Ravel Morrison. Um, we had um, who else was there at the time? Um, some striker called Zigic. We had Marlon King. He's the big guy, yeah. Yeah, Marlon King, Zigic, um, Stephen Carr. He was coming to the end of his career. Um, who else? Gardner, uh, Gardner. Who? Gardner, Craig Gardner. No, no, he went to Villa. Aston Villa, I think that the year before. Um, who else? Um, we had a couple of people. So then, um, yeah, like, bro, the intensity was so mad. I was like, bro, like, this is intense. <laughs> then, like, <laughs> I remember. I was like, so then, um, yeah, like, um, just season after season. So I remember that season when I got a little taste of that. I was like, yeah, nah, this is what I want. This is, that's where I want to be. So then in the youth team, my age, my youth team, my set, like my age, the 1996s, the 96-95, we were, we were good in it. Like the 96s, we were good. Like our, we were better than the second year. So we were, obviously your first year, second year, so like our age group was better than the year above us. Oh, That's how good we was. Yeah, we were, bro. That our set was good. That like we had me, Damari Gray, Reese Brown, Connor Truman, um, Josh Cogley, um, Kobe Arthur, um, one guy called Bobby Mosley. Um, who else? Who else? Bro. Um, 
one guy called Reese Webb, Lee and Trust. Like, bro, our group, like six of us, we all played. We mm. all played in the first team, we all made our debuts. So like our youth, our set was so good. So okay, cool. So then when we was first year, so we was playing obviously youth team football now, and then it got to a stage where because we we were good or we were doing well, we started mm. playing under two ones. So we gone from playing under 18s football to under reserve team football at the time. Mm. So imagine you're 16, 17, you're playing, bro, you're gonna be playing against someone that's not been in a squad for his first team and he's gotta come back and play. You could be 25, but yeah. you're playing against some established pros in that. So you're thinking, bro, but you're thinking, look, this is where I need to be to then enhance again to get to the first team. Mm. So then that was that was major. And so then obviously that's what happened to me. So towards the end of my first year squad, because I was doing well. I kind of got pushed up with the under-21s, finished mm -hmm. the season on the high. And then the next season, I remember I started off strong again. So then I remember when I was 17, the first team manager was like, look, like you're ready, like I'm going to play you. I'm 17, you know, in the championship at the time. Like, look, I'm going to play you. I think you're ready. Like, Just let's go a year ago, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I'm thinking, so I'm like, but well, obviously it didn't happen, it? obviously you still got a squad. So obviously you didn't, didn't really, um, didn't get to me nothing, but, to tell you how good my first team was, my 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 um my age group was, three people had already made their debuts by then. Did you get it? Yeah, so I know like, that. 18, 17. So we were like, no, 16, 17, yeah, 17 going 18, yeah, yeah, correct. So then that's, so then I remember, so then a year after again, uh, so then so the second year, my second year squad played, smashing it, and then it got to the point where they couldn't judge me off playing with my age anymore because it because I was doing so well. So they sent me on loan to Oxford City Conference <laughs> against men in that battles for all the ball in the air, dead pitch, like battle but it made me strong. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I was playing against men. I was trying to express myself against like grown ass men. Like do you know what I mean? Just men's football mm. is what I needed. Not playing against someone that's your age or playing against someone who potentially could be 30, 35. Yeah. So then done that. And then, um, under, obviously, obviously, I got my professional contracts. So I went into the under-21 reserve team. So it's now one step away. Yes. So then that year, I was flying, bro. Flying, played. I think, till this day, I've probably still got the most appearances in the under-21s at Birmingham. I don't know, maybe someone else is... Yeah, bro. Because I played from such an early age. Like, yeah. So then, yeah, I was always starting, always playing. It's always consistent, never really got injured, nothing like that. So then, um, yeah, so then, and then I remember that season came, so then now it's like, okay, cool, I've done all of this. I, I, like, I want to play league football now, I want to either go alone or try and fight. But I know those times I was thinking, bro, like, there's about four or five players ahead of me in my position. Mm -hmm. I have no experience whatsoever. Like, how am I going to play? Yeah. So then I remember, um, yeah, so it was, that's what I was thinking. So I was trying to go alone and I was entertaining it. And then I remember, you know, like when teams play, like, so you, before like a team plays a, a match, they usually play like a practice match against like, I don't know, like the under 21s, just to like see, just to work on a few things. Yeah. To see like how they're going to play. So we've played, we're playing against the first team. So I'm thinking, yeah, but I'm going to, nah, I'm, I'm going to seize this opportunity, bro. Absolutely smashed it and I was killing it. <laughs> so then the manager called me in the office. I'm thinking, oh, I don't know what I've done. I'm shook now. I'm scared. Because it's not, it's rare for me to go and have a meeting with the first team manager. Isn't it? So Who's the first team manager at the time, by the way? It was uh, Gary Rowett. Gary Rowett. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking, oh, what have I done? So she's called me in the office. She's like, look, be patient, please. I'm going to give you an opportunity. You're going to play. I'm not going to send you alone. You're going to play. Wow. So I was thinking, bro, cool. So I was calm, patient, and then got my debut when I was 19, 2015, and that's when it started, bro. Yeah. Literally. So, like, all that work of like school, like going there from 16, leaving school, and then that's what it's for, like, moments like that. So then, mm. work that, so you work all that hard, you work hard like that, like you sacrifice school. And then for that moment, that's what it's all about, man. When you think about that and you think, yeah, I've finally done it. Like, at least I can say, cool, I've done it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, 
I think that's important because people. they don't really understand the amount of effort, the time, the practice that ballers put into like, playing professional football. Even the ones that play on the don't even get the opportunity and they're on the bench. Yeah, literally. So like it was, it was just a, it was a dream come true, man. It was, it was, it was, it was a special day. It was a special moment, and obviously that allowed me to kick on and get to where I am now. So. Yeah, that's good, man. So you've made your debut now, professional debut. It's a massive wave over your shoulders. Like everyone's like, "Rah, Viv!" From wherever you're from in London, has finally made his debut for Berms. Like, how did that feel? How was your family's reaction? Your friends? Like, it was just everyone was like, it was for my family. It was just oh, finally, mm. because they've seen that the, the work. That I put on, but for others, it was just like, obviously, when I was just like, oh my god, like, bro, like, because usually some people don't make their debut, so like 20, 21, 22, mm-hmm. 23. So then to make your debut at, for me at 19, it was like, it was, it was surreal, man. Everyone was, had a lot of support, a lot of support from family and friends, which was good. It was nice to see people that saw the journey, like, react like that, and actually show they cared. So it was, it was good. I appreciate it a lot. Mm. And also, how did the Birmingham fans treat you as well? Are they good? Yeah, and I'm, even to this day, like they still they still show me love. I still get tweets from them, messages, and uh, they showed me love from when I was young because they felt as if I was one of them coming. Even though I wasn't from Birmingham, I lived there at a young age, so they just felt yeah. like I'm one of them because I came from. So yeah, it was it was good. Also, I'm just going to talk about because I see you you played in like the last few minutes of the cup game against Aston Villa. Explain like the rivalry between Birmingham and Aston Villa. Like how big is it? Like our play, our fans message you saying you can't lose this game. Like show up, fight, all of that. Obviously, I remember. I was young. Obviously, I played. We played against Aston Villa at youth level one time, and there was a bit yeah. of like obviously there was a little build up for that. Like this should be build up. That. Like we were on it, people who don't regularly make mad challenges are on making challenges. It was mad. So then, I remember playing. Yeah, I remember that game. I remember. I think I came and lost fifteen, twenty. That was like my second time as well, my second appearance mm. in the first team. So like, to be a part of that was just mad. Like warming up, going to Villa Park, beautiful, beautiful stadium by the way, and like just seeing like, bro, the stage. I remember because the Villa, the Aston Villa bench is like. It's not underground, but like you have to walk up a little steps to get onto the pitch. Mm. So I remember, like, I've, as I've walked up, I've just looked up and I just see, bro, it was just packed. And like, I just mm. seen a lot of heads. Like, I was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh, no, I focused. Do you know what I mean? So then I remember, because the game was on TV, I knew everyone was watching. Yeah, it was. I remember, I, came, I remember I came on that day and just tried to do that. It was just mad, like, to be a part of that was crazy, bro. And obviously the rivalry, mad. Like, right. the fans, that's what they sing about. They just can't wait to play against Aston Villa every year. Literally, that's what they care about, playing against Villa. Yeah, like, I went to uni in Birmingham as well. So, I went to a couple of Blues Villa games, like, 2016, 17. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like, that man, they take it. Hella police. Hella police. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's nice serious. So yeah, a lot of police in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So let's speak about that. A lot of police, bro. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I was gonna move on to like your first goal, like against Fulham. I've everyone seen it where you dubs like who was the defender you dubs? <laughs> the Fulham defender. Um, one guy called Stearman. So let me tell you, yeah, so I, I was nineteen. I was nineteen at the time, yeah. So I'm, I remember I'm running with the ball. And he's like to me, come on, then, come on, then. <laughs> in front. Like, I was thinking, bro, like, yeah. But obviously, I'm just not, I'm not trying to let him get in my head, in it? Because I could have fumbled that. Like, I could have just done something mad. So I've gone, so I've ran, I've ran. He's like, come on, then, come on. I left. But obviously, I wasn't. I just chopped him, just dropped, and I just banged it in. And then, bro, <laughs> like, it was like, I don't know, like, I lost all strength at that time. I didn't know what to do, bro. And, like, you just scored, man. I used to school, like, 5,000 people were just roaring. It was mad. Yeah. And I, was, I was with my boy as well. Because, like, obviously, like I said, my youth team was about three or four of us. I was in the first team was for my youth team. So, like, mm-hmm. I'm there. Like, my boy, that like, we've been playing for the under-16, played under-16, under-17s, 18s, 19s, 20s, 21s. And then first team, like, we're there. And then, obviously, Damari Gray, same. And then, obviously, I bagged. And then it's just, it was just a mad moment. Yeah. So, like, it was just 
great moment, man. Great moment. Good, good, and, and your celebration as well. Explain that you did that. This or something. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. Uh, we don't need to talk about that. Time, but yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, 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 about, yeah um, but, uh, your relationship with Gary Rowett because Gary Rowett spoke very highly of you in the press and a lot of articles said how you uh, got a lot of potential. You're very quick, very strong. You can apply yourself. You can, you know, follow the steps of Demario Gray. Speak about his influence as a coach during like the time he was there because he left quite abruptly at Bose. Um no his influence was good. Obviously like he like he wasn't he never used to complicate things in it. He just used to tell you what like he wanted from you and he never really wanted to change your style too much because because obviously my attributes is what they're my their natural attributes in it. So yeah. we're just more of learning the game. So he just obviously said, teach me the game, obviously, because I was young. And he just said, teach me the game, but apply what you're good at and show and apply why you are here in the first place. And that's all it was. So it wasn't too, wasn't too simple or complicated. But it wasn't simple and it wasn't complicated at the same time. Mm. It was just like, perfect. And it just allowed me to just do what I needed to do. Yeah. And then shortly after that, you go on loan to Bolton. Loan to yeah. Bolton, Blackpool. Like, how were that, those experiences? That, the boat, the boat and loan was was weird because, like, I remember it was it was at a boat and three other clubs, and they all said the same thing: "Oh, you're gonna come in and play." Like, obviously, the back of last season, I played what thirty games in the championship at the time. Mm. I was nineteen my first season, so I'm thinking, okay, cool. I'm not really getting as much games now. I remember Zola was the manager, but he was not letting me go. Like. He was like, I remember, he was like, you're going to get your chance. You're going to get your chance. He was not letting me go. I was like, listen, I need to play. Like, I need to play. He was like, you're going to play. Be patient. I want you to learn. You're 20. Mm. So I was like, okay, cool. So for the first two, three weeks, for the first two, three weeks, so it was last week, so December, I'm training, training sick, playing well, whatever. And he's like, so then I, I think I played against Newcastle in the FA Cup. And then we lost that game and then training playing well. And then I remember I wasn't in the squad again. I was like, listen, look, please, like, just let me go alone for the last remaining of the season and play. Mm. And he was like, all right, cool, I'll let you. But obviously, Burn on the other side, Birmingham wasn't doing too well on it when I went mm. to Bolton. So that's probably why he got sacked. But I believe if he, got set, if he stayed the next season and he was able to like implement his structure properly and bring him certain players that he wanted he would have been mm. successful in it obviously football sometimes you don't really have time so mm. then yeah I've gone to Bolton and what the Bolton manager said two of the manager said you're going to play so I remember we um, we we played against MK Dons and our right back got injured so then the manager changed the three out of the back and then that was literally that was it I remember but I knew like, I'm versatile I can play number 10 I can play wing back so that I was killing it and training every day. I remember I used to go to my face happening. And then he's like, oh, you're going to get your chance, you're going to get your chance. But at the same time, the team was winning, innit? And we got promoted to the championship that year. Mm. So then it was just one of them, it was a more like it was a learning curve, innit? Like, it was just, but it was just one of them, innit? Like, it was nothing to do with me. Like, I just played, like, it was just the situation I was in. And man, obviously, that's, that's what the manager felt. But it was weird because, Every day I make sure I want the best one of the best in training so that when they give the report back to Birmingham, there was no issues. Do you know what I mean? They can never say my attitude or anything like that. So then, yeah, I remember they even wanted to sign me after that. I remember I didn't play full time. I wasn't, I didn't want to do it. So then um, I've gone back to Birmingham in the summer and um, Harry Redknapp's the manager now. Yeah, so, really. so he hasn't seen me, he don't know me, but then he's got to know me and he's like, oh, I'll stay. But I'm like, no, nah, look, I need to I want to play a full season, I just want to play. So I've gone alone to Blackpool, I just killed it, played 47 games, scored goals, assists, just enjoying my time. And then, yeah, man, that was, that was, but the Blackpool one was, was, was good days, it was happy days. I was 21, 22, times was what, two years ago, two, three years ago now. But it was, it was good times, just enjoying my football, express myself, and I was able to do to do what I love and play week in, week out. But at yeah. such a, I was, what, 21, just 
2022 starting every week. So yeah. it's good. Also, how is it when you're going on loan to different clubs, you have to go to a different area, settle in, settle in with new players? Is, do you find that transition easy or is it just a bit difficult at times? No, it was calm because obviously I had one thing in my mind and that was I need to play. I need to, to prove to these guys, like, look, <laughs> that um, I'm coming. I'm not coming to joke around. I'm coming to play. So mm. it was normal. And obviously we had good other good young players that came alone as well, like Sean Longstar. Oh, at Newcastle, yeah. Yeah, he came um, to Blackpool that year. And like, we just connected. And Callum, one other guy called Callum Cook, he came from Middlesbrough. Uh, we all just connected and it was just easy to play with them because obviously they were in the same boat as me. They're young players, hungry, come on loan. They're trying to prove to their mate, player at the club that, look, I would give me opportunity or yeah. I feel like I, I at least play. So then we just all clicked, played and enjoyed, enjoyed the, the, the 12 months that was there. So, it was, yeah, it was easy. It was good. That's good. And then after Blackpool, you go on loan to Portsmouth. Yeah, so I went back to um, Birmingham thinking, yeah, like, I've, 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 I'm pretty sure I've earned my stripes now. I've played 47 games. I don't want they were asked me to do, but obviously we got we had a manager in it. But they got a new manager again, because I think in my, at my time, at Birmingham, from when I made my debut to when I left, they had like five different managers. I can't, I think it was six. I've, 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 got, six, them written, yeah. written, I've got them written yeah, down. Six different, man- six different managers. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, it's like, crazy. Four, five years, six managers, mad. So then, um, yeah, I went back and then like there was just some dodgy stuff going on there like where I haven't ever spoke publicly about it, but they, the manager and his agent, I'm not going to say their names, you'll know, they tried to sell me to a club behind my back. And I, was, and I was like, whoa, 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 like, we're not doing this. I was like, obviously, I'm calm, like, I'm a laid back person, like, I'm not going to shout anything so I remember so obviously I remember that year it was that like, I was supposed to go back of, 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 of having a loan at Blackpool mm-hmm. go back go back to Birmingham again show I'm ready to play so I remember the first game against Norwich it's good. the bench yeah. so I'm trying to say Middlesbrough no start yeah just come on like last 5-10 like I remember against Bolton came on against Bolton last 5-10 bro I'm, I'm then like we'd have to play like games to get fit, scoring goals, getting assists. So I'm thinking, bro, like I'm pretty sure like I'm doing enough to like, at least get an opportunity to at least start one game, at least one yeah. game. We went with the, um, the other person that they they favoured. Mm. So then, ah, oh, sorry. So then um, it was just it was just one of it was just one of them things. So then I remember um. I remember it got to um, January or you know, something. There was one time I wasn't in the squads and that, and I was like, "No, nah, man, like, bro, I like, come." On. I just been, I just played forty-seven games. I'm just doing my thing. I've like had, I had decent interests and decent offers to do. So, go swear you said no, and then I'm sitting here doing nothing. So, yeah. it don't really make sense. So then, um, what did I do? Um, it got to like January times, and I was like, "Look, I want to go. I want to go on loan to play football, like to to go out and I, I need to play in it. I'm twenty. I'm 22, going to be 23. I haven't played for six months. I need game time. I need to be playing games. Like I'm not, I'm not comfortable just sitting on being on the bench or not in the squad tonight. This old playing under 23s. I stopped playing that when I was 19. Yeah. So like, fast forward to three years. Oh, I'm, why, 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 why getting thrown in some games? Like that's not what I'm going to be doing. So then, I like, oh, yeah, cool. Um, we'll think about it. So then, call me to my office and his office, and then the man at the time called me to his office and was like, oh. <laughs> Um, this club wants to sign you. I was like, I had six months left of my contract, but I already knew I was, I was already thinking about going to Europe already. Yeah. So I was like, one, if, if I'm leaving now, I just want to go on loan, play to end of the season, then make up my mind at the end of the season. So then they were like, oh, um, he was like, oh, like, um, well, are you sure that's what you want to do? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm adamant. That's what I want to do. So then like, Aaron, he said, oh, this club trying to, wants to sign you. Bear in mind, I didn't know nothing about it. Here's how much they want to pay you. So I'm thinking, what? Like, how are you telling me this club wants to sign you, this how much wants to pay you? You're reading the contract to me. I don't even, I've never spoken to this club. I don't know. Mm. So like, bro, it's not right. It's dodgy, isn't it? So now I was like, no, I'm good. So now I remember, I walked out the office to go to training. Bear in mind, all I've said is like, no, 
or rather go on long play in the season, then I in the summer I will go to Europe, make up my mind, or I will go somewhere else, also in England, whatever. So then I've gone to train, or I've been outside today. I'm thinking, what? You're in the gym. So imagine I've gone out to train, then mm-hmm. they've sent me inside to train in the gym on my own. Wow. So I'm thinking, like, wow. Right, is this what we're doing? And this is what people don't see. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? This is what people on the outside don't get to see. Mm. So then, like, it, a lot of footballers would, could tell you this. So then, because I've, I've come through the academy, like, they love me there. They love me at Burma. My pictures are there till this day, like, on walls. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So then, I said to the academy manager, and I said to my youth team coach at the time, I said, look, this is what they're trying to do to me. And then this is what's happened. So obviously, he was like, oh, don't worry, I suck. So he was like, oh, don't worry about it, we'll sort it out. So I remember, I ended up getting the loan, the loan, no, sorry, then the next, the next day, obviously, I knew that teams in Europe, wanted, I knew I had, like, Option. good loan offers to go to, do you know what I'm I knew I had options to kind of calm. So I remember the next day, um, but I trained with the uh, under 20, 20, 23s. I remember training with under 23s, and more time, there was just like 18, 19 year olds training. And I'm thinking, bro, like, <laughs> just take, I remember that day, I was so angry. I didn't tie my laces. I was trained. I trained all right, but I was pissed off in it. Like, that's when it got to me. So I remember I walked in now, Sky Sports, oh, this all has been linked, linked with Palermo on loan. So everyone was like, bro, like, you're going to Palermo? I was like, yeah, like, I knew already. So obviously, it was, I think it was pissing them off because obviously, I didn't want to do what they ultimately wanted me to do. Mm. So obviously, you know what football's like, they were going to, I mean, make money or whatever. They tried to make money off my, off my head, which was not happening like that, especially. So then um, I remember I ended up going, I went on loan for, to Portsmouth, went to Portsmouth, played, then got a little like calf injury, hampered my loan, came back for playoffs. And then um, I think we lost against Sunderland in the semifinals. Mm, yeah. And then... Um, yeah, went back to Birmingham for pre-season. And obviously that's when I had the decision to make whether to sign or to then think about my career and or what, what I needed to do. So then I just, it was this difficult leaving because it was like, Home. I remember I was in tears, I was, in, I was crying, I was in tears when I was writing the, the message that I put on my Instagram because it was like, for what, for since I was 16 to 23, that's all I knew. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So then to be writing that message and leave, and it was emotional for me, man. But then when I done it, and I just thought, okay, cool. Look, this is this this is what I need to do. I need to start thinking for myself and for my, for my future and the stuff I want to accomplish. So I thought, you know, what, look, I want to go to a top. Um, I want to go to a top team in Europe, uh, like a top division, a first league, and play and try to break into the national team. And that's where I went. And it's what we've been. I remember the first month I got there. I was playing, getting my feet, set them up, playing, boom. Uh, call up to Nigeria, sh- straight. Wow. So then, like, I think it was perfect. And then, obviously, enjoyed it, obviously, with racism, but I'm past that now. And then, um, yeah, obviously, Corona happened. So then, came back, came back to England. Yeah, just quickly, me. speak yeah. speak about your experience in Bulgaria, in Sofia. Like, how was it, like, during those times because it's quite difficult like you said with the whole racism thing like, how do you get over it when it's even your own fans who are even abusing you oh, like, um, what's it called the fans the CSK fans were, they were calm they were good mad passionate people like football there there was two teams in Sofia there was Levski and there was CSK so, Sofia Sophie is obviously the bigger one, isn't it? We're the biggest club in Sofia. So obviously that comes with a lot of pressure. Because mm-hmm. one, if you don't win the league, if you finish second, if you don't finish, if you finish second, that's not good enough. Yeah. You have to win the league. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That's the standard that, that's what, that, and I enjoyed it at the same time because that's what I wanted, bro. I wanted to be like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So then, um, the fans are so passionate. I could be, I would walk to the supermarket, yeah, on the mall, and someone would be like, look, like, they'll tell, they, they will tell me, like, they're telling me, <laughs> bro, I, I'm, they're telling me, oh, welcome to Bulgaria, you know, you play for the biggest club here, 
like this is the stunt, like bro, like just normal people, bro. Yeah. And like, I found it like, bro, like they really love, they love football so much in that country, and like, they're so passionate. Mm. So then the racism thing obviously affects me a bit because obviously I was young, I've never been through it, but obviously mm. now, if it was to happen to me now, whether it's not good, it can never ever get to me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But obviously it's wrong, but at the same time, it's just one of those things where bro, I'll overcome it and ride it. Yeah. So, yeah. How, how how tense is the derby between CSKA and Levski? <laughs> bro, it's so tense. <laughs> hey, I remember the first time I played, I remember um for the whole week they were telling me I remember one time I was going to train because um my car wasn't sorted. Mm-hmm. So I had to take a taxi. I remember I walked into the taxi. The guy said, no, you got to get out. So I'm left ski. you got to get out. Wow. <laughs> You're lucky he didn't beat you up, it's bro. Like a man, it's like you. What, who do you support? Arsenal. Support Arsenal, yeah. So that's like a t- oh. Tottenham fan saying, no, you can't get in. Yeah, yeah, that's like a Tottenham fan saying, oh, no, you can't get in. Mm. But you got to go. You got to wait for the next, you got to wait for the next taxi to come. You can't get in. Bro. Literally, that's what it was. Yeah, damn. That is serious. Yeah, literally, that's what no, it was. I'm in my so then, I remember I got to train. Yeah, but the match. I remember, like, that was my first full 90 minutes as well. Obviously, just going there, my full first 90 playing. Bro, was, the experience was crazy. The stadium was packed. Banners, singing, shouting, smoke, red smoke, blue smoke. Bro, it was crazy, bro. We ended up was, and to make it worse, we was two 0 down at half time, bro. Oh. <laughs> two 0 down at half time, second half, but, and we, but we was playing so good. Mm. So that's what kind of eased off because we was playing so good. Then yeah, we came back. We came back, drew two two. Yeah, that's good. If you man lost, you know you man, them man are coming to the training ground next day. <laughs> Literally, because I had to, I had a flight to back to England the, the next day, the same, the night. And a flight, morning. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been getting enough flight. <laughs> yeah, last time. Uh, no chance. Was, was was the manager cool? Yeah. So um, our manager looked cool at the time. Imagine our manager was seventy four. Imagine mm-hmm. seventy four, experienced man. He won the Champions League in nineteen ninety one with Red Star Ball Grey. Oh. It's like. I remember when I first got there, I was not overweight, but I wasn't fit. So it was like to me, I'm not your friend. <laughs> so for like two weeks, bro, he didn't speak to me. I swear. Then, bro, when he saw me working and getting fit, he's like, oh, now we're best friends. He's like, now we're best friends, bro. Played me every time. Love me, love me, love me. Good guy. Yeah. Love me, good guy, yeah. It was good, man. It was good times there, bro. Good times. I enjoyed it, man. Good club. Good family club, bro. We do a lot, like, the club does a lot for families, people like it, like families are welcome to come to the training ground. Like everyone has time for everyone there, which I love. And obviously it's a new it's a different culture, it's a different life. Yeah. And I I want to want to adapt. Like it was like it was proper, man. I loved it, man. It was good. Yeah, that's good, man. But, and was it sad when you like unfortunately had to leave? Yeah, like it was a bit like I could have stayed. I didn't have to sign the mutual agreement. I could have stayed, but at the same time, for the benefit of the club, I did. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah, man, but who knows what happens in the future, to be honest, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you've left um, Bulgaria now, you come back to England, it's locked down, everything's crazy, league seasons are suspended, you don't know when games are coming back. Like, what's your next move? Like, how did you eventually come to get to Wigan? So basically, obviously, I had like, a lot of things in the pipeline, innit? but for me at the time, I just wanted to like sit down and evaluate everything. And then come to some sort of decision around August times. So now I thought, you know what, let me just sign for Wigan and play. Just play again, just continue to play and then see what happens. So then that's what I've done. Went there, playing, enjoying my football and then just got injured. So that's what kind of staggered my my momentum at the, obviously at the time. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Obviously. But now my ankle's back now, so obviously I'll be back for that in the next two, three weeks. So I'm, I'm back. <laughs> Good to hear, man. Need you on the pitch. Need you on the pitch. I'm back, man. 
Now, g- given that you're a winger, I just wanted to ask you, like, who are your top three ever Premier League wingers? Top three, yeah? Yeah, in your opinion, yeah. Wing- wingers, yeah, I'd say. It's got to be Wolf of Zaha, Belassi, and, uh, and Robin. Okay, yeah. Will Wolf, I'm a big Will Zaha fan. That's my guy. But I yeah, didn't well. have the same ones that you had. Can't lie. Who did you have? I had Ronaldo, Hazard, and Ben. No, but you can't call Ronaldo and Hazard wingers, though. Like, Hazard was more of like a playmaker. If you said, like, best number 10s, Hazard. <laughs> For me, Ronaldo, yeah. Young Ronaldo, yeah, okay, cool. Young Ronaldo was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah, Ronaldo from so, 06 or yeah. times. Okay, cool. Young Ronaldo, okay, cool. Let me just, like, let me just at least put him. Young Ronaldo, even though he wasn't getting the mad numbers he was getting now, but even with, back then, pff, ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous. I remember, I think I watched the interview that Carton called on today. I remember that game seeing the highlight when he got the ball from his own box. Against Charlton, just breeze past like four man. Mm. <laughs> Rena- yeah, bro. Young Ronaldo, Zaha, Balassi. Yeah, man. Yeah, Zaha, Balassi, you know. But Hazard, he's like a wide playmaker. You're right. He's not an out and out winger. Like more like a wide playmaker, I'd say. But he was positioned on the wing. Pardon? I said, like Hazard, he was more of like a wide playmaker. Yeah. Like someone like yeah, Mason. yeah, but Hazard, I'd say Hazard's a playmaker, though, man. Mm. Mm. Ah, fair, fair, fair. And I had like Salah and Bale as well. Bale, was... yeah, I think Bale's a winger. But he was a winger, no, but okay, Hazard, Hazard, Hazard. Who? Gareth Bale? Yeah, Gareth Bale. Do you have Gareth Bale? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, 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 but as in, like, as a winger, like, obviously, they, they were. Like Gareth Bell became more like he started coming more central, started banging my goals. But like way Belassi at Palace, man, when Belassi and Zaha was on the left and the right, yeah, peak. They get it. Like I don't know if you watched. Have you watched um being um the Man City thing? The Man City documentary. Yeah, have you watched it? Well, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where um <laughs> where they've got um, Palace in the weekend and uh, perhaps like to them. You know, um, Zaha's part is Wolf of Zaha. Yeah. <laughs> that when, for someone like Pep to say that, that's when you know, bro, that like, regardless whether he plays for Chris Palace or not, like, just, just to, for him to say it like that, bro, he yeah. knows that, this guy. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, there's a lot, but I'd say young Ronaldo, Balassi, Zaha. Whew. I ain't going to complain with that. Like, Palace local team, like Zaha. But if you said, plum, said playmakers, mm-hmm. Obviously, Hazard. Hazard's probably the best. I remember, you know, um, Hazard's probably the best in the Premier League ever for playing the Prem. Other than Ronaldo, it's as a playmaker, like, forget just the goals, like how he used to just dribble past people with ease and stuff. Yeah, I'd say Hazard. Ozil? Yeah, Hazard. Uh-huh. Ozil. Mm, how about him? Yeah, Ozil's a, Ozil's a freak as well. Like, obviously, his. Like, but he's just like a soft player like people think he's lazy because of the way he runs and moves but he's not a lazy player he's very intelligent as well as um, very intelligent and he's obviously he's quick on the ball and he's very quick with what makes quick decisions yeah so yeah I even think bro there's so much to do from but yeah Ozil, I'd say Ozil has a for me Ozil obviously his vision his passing his assists the way he creates chances Ozil Ozil, De Bruyne, or Hazard? Oh, De Bruyne, yeah. That's a solid, solid list. Cool, I agree with you with that. That's a solid three. Very solid. Right, cool. Next, I'm going to go to flex your knowledge. So, this is if you know your Premier League knowledge to a T. Right, cool. Right, cool. There's going to be six questions. The last question, the sixth one, is a bonus yeah. question worth five points. The first five questions right. are all worth a point plus a bonus point on each question. Alright, cool, cool. Let's go. Yeah. Number one. Who is the current Premier League's longest serving manager? There's four options. Sean Dyche, Jurgen Klopp, Chris Wilder, or Nuno at Wolverhampton. So who's been what, at the club the longest? Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche. It's the Burnley guy, no? Who? What as in the club or in the Premier League? At their club. At their club. Not in the yeah, at their club. 
longest serving. And for a bonus point, give me the number of years that they've been at their club. All right, wait. So you said Sean Dyche. Sean Dyche. Jurgen Klopp. Yeah. Chris Wilder. Yeah. You know, it's Brito Santo at Wolves. It's got to be Burning Manager. Uh, and for, yeah, for bonus point, how many years? I remember because I played against Burnley and he was the manager, and I thought that was my debut. I was 19, so my man was still, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say, um, let's say he was manager from I'd say seven years, close, it was eight years, seven, eight years. Eight years? Yeah, eight years. The seven or eight. Remember, I said eight lost. Did you say eight? eight? I said seven or eight. I said eight, seven, eight years. I said, I said oh, eight, I, seven or eight. I said seven, eight I'll, years. I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll allow bro, you. You, you, can, you can even reload. <laughs> you can even reload the camera, bro. I right. <laughs> cool, cool. I'll, I'll get it your for it. Yeah, Sean Dyche, he's longest, eight years. Yeah. So you got both eight points years, for that. Right. All right, cool. Let's go. Next question. Question number two. Which club holds the record for the second most amount of points in a Premier League season? Man City, Liverpool, mm. Chelsea, yeah. or Man United? And for a bonus point, tell me which season or the points they had. Chelsea, 2004-2005. Okay, is that Man City final? broke. I think so. Cause did Man, Man City broke their points record, no? In 2018. I'll tell you off. Remember, remember what, it has to be Chelsea. Has to be Chelsea. Okay. Remember well, Jesus scored that goal. Yeah, I remember the goal. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. Jesus scored that goal against Southampton for the yeah. Uh, so you said the second. You said. Second. Yes, the second most amount of points. Not not the record. The second. Chelsea. Most. And how many points did they have? Chelsea, no. Was it one hundred and one hundred and nine or one hundred and seven? <laughs> They're both wrong. <laughs> They're both wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it up to hundred? No, nah, the second most the, the second most amount of points. Man City you've got the record, that's a hundred. You know <laughs> oh, 97, 97, Chelsea, 97, no? It's still wrong. It's still wrong. The answer is a Man City. I don't know, bro. Man City. Ninety five, I don't know. Man City, they got ninety. Man City. Yeah, they got ninety-eight points in 2018, 2019. Oh yeah, it was. Man- yeah. I'm smoking. I'm tired. Chelsea. Chelsea had 109 in it. No one had 109. The record's oh, 100. Oh, no one had. A- yeah, the record's 100. Yeah, so yeah. Man City got the second mode. They got the first and second. Yeah, all right, cool. And Chelsea aren't even third. It's Liverpool, 97. But yeah, cool. Next question. Which player has the... Oh no, what is the fewest amount of goals a player has won the golden boot with? Is it either 22, 24, 19 or 17? And for a bonus point, tell me the player who done it and in which year. The, the, the least? Yes, yeah, so they've won the golden boot, but the least yeah. amount that's taken to win it. 22, 24, 19... Or 17? 22, 24, 19 or 17. Was it not 22 Barbie? No. Sorry, no, it's not. That's not. It, 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 was, it was Nicholas Anelka with 19 in 08, 09. A difficult question. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's when Joker wasn't really firing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. That's zero points. Next question. Which player has the most Premier League appearances? Gareth Barry, Ryan Giggs, Frank Lampard, or Steven Gerrard? And for a bonus point, it's quite hard. Tell me the amount of appearances they had. Gareth Barry, you no. Know? Yeah, Gareth Barry's correct. No, Gary, yeah, Gareth. I'll, 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 I'll give you a 10. If you get within a 10 range, either side, I'll give it to you. Because I think that's quite difficult. Is he top 500? Nah, way off. <laughs> well, he played more than 500. 
Appearances, yeah. Way more than 500. Maybe it's, I said 700. No, 653 to be exact. Six. Yeah. Oh. Right. Right, cool. Two more questions to go. This is again a quite a difficult question. Rank in order the teams have won the most Premier League titles. Okay. So between these clubs, rank who's won the most. Premier League titles, not all titles, Premier League. Man United, Liverpool, Man United. Oh. Arsenal, and Man City, and Chelsea. So Man U, Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, and Chelsea, rank in order, most Premier League titles to the least. Man United, Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, Premier United. League titles. So since 1990. Man United, Liverpool, Arsenal. Uh, who was the other one? Man, uh, Man United, City. Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. Where's Man City? Sorry, Man United. No, yeah, last. Man City's last. Man United, <laughs> Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nah, it's wrong, still. Was that wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. Premier League titles, no, isn't it? I mean, so this is 92. No, Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea's only one since 92. Chelsea's only one, what, 20, 2005, 2004, 2005, 2005, 2006, 2010, and they won it uh, 2015. 2015, and they won it Conte. Yeah. Six times. They only won it six times. Yeah, Liverpool have only won one Premier League title. Prem. Oh, since 90. Oh! Yeah. I know, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Man United. Man United, Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal. No. Yeah, Man United. Man United, Chelsea. No. Man United. Wait, I'm done. Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool. Very final answer. Uh. Still wrong. What? <laughs> Man City have got more than Arsenal. Premier Leagues. Oh yeah, I see you got four Arsenal one. You got three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah by one. All right, cool. Let's let that slide. Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true. <laughs> All right, cool. This is the bonus question. This one you should get right. I can't lie. This is worth five points. Okay. In one minute, not now. In one minute, uh-huh. you're gonna name me every player who started your first start. Which this should be. You won a one 0 against MK Dons. Your first ever start in 2015, 28 for December for Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? About it? What? I'm saying in one minute, yeah. rank. No, tell me every single player who started that game with you. It's the bonus <sighs> point. Yeah, you have one minute to do something. Excuse me, I can go. Yeah. Paul Caddis right back. Yeah. Um, Michael Morrison center. Um, yeah. With um, was it Paul Robinson? Yeah, Paul Robinson. Yeah. Uh, left back Jonathan Grounds. Yeah. Uh, centre midfield, it was Keith and Bell, uh, Gleason. Yeah. On the left, it was Magoma. On the right, it was me. Um, John Terrell and uh, Brock, Nicola Brock. Nicola who? Oh, no, no. Clayton Don, Clayton Don, Clayton Don. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> You go, man. Yeah, you done that yeah. good. Five seconds to spare. Okay, you yeah. get five bonus points for that. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Now we're just going to end up with listeners' questions. You get me? Because your fans, they wanted to know about you. So let me just get up. Okay. Um, Who is the most talented player you've played with? Oh, um... Probably um uh, uh that's hard, you know. Well, you can just name a few of the most talented. Don't just pick one because it's quite hard. Um, it and Didi. Didi. Uh, Osherman, It will be Arivo. Mm-hmm. Um. 
uh, Damari Gray, Reese Brown, uh, Long stuff, Longy, um, uh, who else? Um, well, there's a lot, you know. Yeah, so it's a solid list, though, so far. It's a solid list. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, who's the most influential coach in your life, and what's the best advice they've given you? Probably Gary Bowler. And even though I worked with, worked with Zola for a short period of time, he taught me a lot. Mm. Taught me, I mean, he taught me like movement strikers will make to in, to help me enhance my game, to be more versatile. Mm. And that obviously go up because he gave me the breakthrough in it. So. Mm, cool. I'll say that three. Nice. What's the most intimidating atmosphere you've played in? Um, intimidating? Yeah, so you've been there for, rah, this might be a tough game because the fans are just making it like, yeah. Um, I don't know, you know. I can't remember. Uh, probably when I was young. Um, what about in Bulgaria? Uh, yeah, probably um, the, we played against Ludogorets. Oh, Ludogorets? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this one. <laughs> This one's gonna look a bit mad if you lose. They're all good as well. Their team is good, bro. Probably Ludogorets one game against Ludo. The first time, the first time I ever played them. Who um, was your? Who's the most talented bowlers you've come up against? Like, who's the hardest team you've kind of faced for? This guy's a mad bowler. From Nigeria, played Brazil. Um. No, there's a lot, you know, because obviously in different teams, there's obviously that one individual, that couple, couple of their players, they're good in it. Um, mm. I don't know who's... I don't know, I can't really remember. Like, it's a difficult one because we're playing against a lot of good players, you know. But like, games, you know, after you finish playing a game, like, you kind of have to forget and go and think about the next game. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I don't really process and think like that. I can't really remember off the top of my head. But if I was to watch them back, then I'd, I'd be able to tell you. Uh, who's, like, the, the hardest man you played with? Or, like, this guy's always beefing, man. He's always, like, you don't want to mess with him. <laughs> Probably my captain in Bulgaria, Peter Zanev. This guy, you don't want to beef him. <laughs> On smoke. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't want to beat them, so ah, it's slow. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're all right. I've been told something now. Long. Bro, it's long. You don't want to beat them. Long. Bulgarian, Bulgarian international experienced guy. Played in like, Russia and uh, played in La Ligue. Nah, you don't want to beat him, so long. <laughs> long, bro. You use right. the hot. Go on. Hmm? Go on. Oh, I was like, who's the hardest like, defender? Or team you've come up against? This season, I'd say Nathan Thompson. First half, he was on me, like, poking me in my bum, like, grabbing me. <laughs> and I know him. I know him as well, because I played him in my ports. Like, are, you, are you this how Are you you're, you're shitting it? Like, bro, <laughs> in my things. And I was like, no, no, no. Second half, I had to spin him, bro. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, you mad? Like, yeah. Oh, man. I like, like, watch. I'm getting like, huh. Yeah. Destroyed him, mm. but for like the first 15 minutes, he was on me. Anytime I get a ball, bang, tackle, clap. on me, mm. clap, clap, clap. Manager was like, Come on, like, you're not gonna let him get in your head, turn mm. it up. Well, so, that. him, of what I can remember, mm. um, Messi or Ronaldo, what side are you on? Was he? I'm not gonna as a as an adapter, someone who we've all seen playing different leagues, Ronaldo in it, but you mm-hmm. can't take away Messi's ability and what he's done. So I don't know, man. I I wouldn't say any any of them are better because they're both crazy, ridiculously sick in their in their in their, um, in their own way. 
Yeah. Uh, I can. I can have to, I just have to give you. I have to give you both. Still. Come on, pick one. You got okay. Fight. Pick one in your team. Who are you picking? <laughs> um. You can't. Nah, fair, fair. Probably Ronaldo because he's gonna score. Oh, right, so Ronaldo man. probably. So, so Messi can't score. Huh? Messi can't score. Yeah, Messi can score, but your team would have to be built around them, wouldn't it? Mm, yeah. Like Ronaldo should just be an individual team. Mm. What's your biggest regrets, if you've got any, really, in your sport and life? Like, if you could change anything in your journey so far, is anything you change? I don't know, maybe if I was younger, some games I played, maybe just be more, just express myself. That's it. Just be mm-hmm. free. That's it. As you're young, you're nervous, isn't it? But I just say, be, be free. Express myself. Cool. Couple more. I always ask this to every guest that comes on. Would you rather be a great player or have a trashed legacy or a good player, but a few remember you? Like you're basically forgotten, but you had a good career. I'll be forgotten about because my my close people will know it. As long as my life is good afterwards, I'm fine. Is it okay? Most people I asked, they said they'd rather be remembered as a great player. But fair, I hear well, that. Which... Yeah, that tarnished. Like, I don't know what you did, but it's just like you're remembered nah, for nah. that rather than what you did on the pitch. Cool. And uh, finally, what like important traits would you give to youngsters coming up? Like, what do they need to have to that like, be where you are I just say be disciplined a lot of sacrifice try and be mentally strong even though it's difficult and work work extra hard work twice as hard as the person next to you mm. and be humble and always listen to your elders and listen to your teachers whether it's at school I don't know Saturday school or tutors just listen trust me information is important especially to someone that's seen more life than you have seen so I was just saying, yeah, but Viv, thank you for coming on. It's been a packed yeah. episode. Told us your journey, man. You're still young now, like this is just a small part yeah. of what we're left. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the best for the season, you know, get back fit and you know, all the best, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, bro.